Hey guys, as you see by the title, it is going to be I'm Coming Out. Now I know most of you guys are probably like, bitch, you already out, we know you gay. But this coming out is more of a, but it's a small story about my journey through being where I am today. Oh, when did I know I was gay? I knew at five. Guys, I knew at five years old that I was different. I didn't know what that difference was. I knew that I wasn't a normal five-year-old. I knew that I liked boys. And it wasn't in a sexual way, but I just knew that it was something I gravitated more towards. One of the things that I knew I was gay, when one of my cousins got the Barbie, I guess the Barbie pool or whatever, and I went over the house and I was like, Jesus, I need to play with that. I need to play with that doll and that pool and in the car. And I loved Barbie dolls. <laughs> and I know a lot of boys that like Barbies when they're children and they don't, they're not gay. But for me, I love Barbie because Barbie equaled beauty. She had her heels, she had the dress on. I loved Wonder Woman. I loved all superhero movies, but I gravitated towards the female superheroes all the time. One, because they looked better. They had on makeup, they had heels on. It was just something within me that knew that I loved that side of the spectrum. When Batman came on, that old Batman where my brothers used to watch, I only loved to watch it when, when Batgirl was on or Catwoman was going to be there because they were, the, they were the, 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 the characters that I loved and I identified with. You know what I mean? It was just something about the feminine spectrum that I loved more than masculine. And believe it or not, I'm definitely more masculine than feminine. I just love my makeup and hair, but I definitely have more of a masculine aura. Anyone who knows me knows that. I just pretend and act like fool just to make people laugh. but. Guys, I used to look. I, <clears throat> I knew also that I love makeup. When I used to see my mother get ready when we went out, and her, she would get dressed, and she's already a beautiful woman, but when my mother put on makeup, it was like, ah! I was like, I want to look like that. I want to have a blank canvas and then all of a sudden come out and look like snatched. It was something, and my aunts, my aunts, I had like four aunts who love makeup as well. And it was always around them, and they always were beautiful, they always smelled great, they always looked good, they wore high heel shoes. I was like, okay, maybe I'm not gay. Maybe I like women who wore heels. I wouldn't only date a woman who wore heels. You wore flats, you weren't fucking with me. But it was something about that, 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 feminine aspect that I loved, that I identified with. And I don't know if it was because my mother kept me under her wing or what it was, I just knew I loved things that were for the women. I don't know if it's a, it's a brain thing, we might need to do some studies on this shit. But, you know, when I was growing up, those are the things and the characters that I looked to. Those are the people that I felt like I identified more with. When me and my brother would play, I always wanted to be the damsel in distress. <laughs> you know, the screaming like Jamie Lee Curtis, the running, and if we play superheroes, I wanted to be the bionic woman. I wanted to be Wonder Woman. And my mother asked me, she was like, and this is why I knew my father knew I was gay. He was watching Wonder Woman, and he said, did he want to be Wonder Woman? And my mother said, of course not, but that's the truth, I did. When I wanted to play superheroes, I wanted to be Wonder Woman. He used to see me spin around like Wonder Woman. And, and pretend that I had transformed. That's just something that I did. When my mother, and she'll know, when y'all used to take your heels off, I would put them on because I wanted to walk around in heels. I wanted to be walking around in her shoes. There was one pair of shoes I loved by my mother. They were a pair of tan sling back or high heel shoes. And it had snake skin around the, the front of it. It was the piping of snake skin. She had another pair of like a pinkish purple shoe that was snakeskin. That's why I love snakeskin shoes to this day because of those shoes. And I had a teacher who also wore snakeskin pumps. I have an, exception, an obsession now with snakeskin. Anyone who knows me now knows I have a ton of snakeskin shoes. 
I wear these Cuban heel shoes because they are, Cuban heels are like higher heels for men about two or three inches and I love those kind of boots. And I think it goes to seeing these people wear high heel shoes and I loved that. I loved the, that, that, that part of women, that the beauty of them, the natural beauty, their hair. Yeah, it's just, it's just this thing I think that little boys, and if you know someone who does this and loved heels and wrap little scarves around their head to make it fit with this long hair, and if you know someone, listen, it does not necessarily mean they're gay, but those are the tendencies that showed me early on and showed my parents that this boy is different. He, he definitely, you know, is gearing more towards the, the women's side. Let me tell y'all something. I had a Christmas list. My Christmas list, I remember specifically, was a stove. I wanted a play stove. I wanted a play refrigerator, a play sink, and I wanted a vacuum cleaner. That was my Christmas list, and I had some other things on there, and fake groceries. I didn't get any of that shit, by the way. But I circled it in a magazine because that is what I wanted, but I think that my parents was like, nope. We're not going to give him this. We're going to give him Tonka trucks, which I played with and all this other stuff. But I wanted the stove. I wanted the sink. I wanted the vacuum. And those are early signs that sometimes, you know what? Just get those things. Get them. You know what? Let them, let them get it out of the system. Let it get out. Maybe that was a system thing. But nope, for me, it was my reality. It was the fact that, yeah, I was gay. And I enjoyed. I enjoyed being a boy. I used to love climbing and running, but... Like normal boy, you know, normal boys, I was very wild. I used to like to climb trees, step on roaches, and do all of this other stuff. And still and all, internally, I still felt like with all of that, I didn't play sports. You throw a basketball at me, I'm probably going to be like, wee, you know. Um, but with all of that, I just still knew that I was a little different. And that's what it is. All it is. And I'm, and I'm, I, I look at this stuff now as an adult and I say, wow. If I was to tell my five-year-old self, love yourself no matter what, and it's gonna be okay. So when coming out, um, or in my journey to coming out, there was something that lifted off of me knowing that my mother now knows my deepest, darkest secret, that I'm gay. It was um, a, a, a feeling of liberation, but embarrassment. I don't know why I couldn't come to her, but whoever's out there, when your mama knows you gay, it don't matter who knows, because then nobody can now hold it over your head. I have the secret over you that you're gay and your mama don't know. Once my mother knew, I didn't care who knew. I don't care who accepted me. And when I actually had a conversation with my mother, she told me that no matter what, I will always love you. That meant everything to me. I will not get emotional like Oprah, but that meant the world to me that no matter what, I knew my mother had my back and that it was okay. And that I could move on with the fact that my mother still loves me no matter what. And she called me on my job. She's probably gonna kill me. She called me on my job and she said, because of a situation that happened in my family, so-and-so came out, I have a question. Are you gay or bisexual? I was like, I'm bi. She said, no, you're not, you're gay. In that moment, we couldn't really talk, and I said, yes, I have to go, hung up. I feel like with my message today is living your authentic truth. And with my channel, my channel's geared towards the homosexual community. I would love everyone to watch this channel. This is, I, I want this to be very inclusive, but I feel like a lot of us gay people don't have an outlet. There's no talk shows really geared towards us. Most talk shows are geared towards women, and the ones who are geared towards men are geared towards heterosexual men. And I wanted to have a platform, which is my channel, 
to really be that person. And I'm not, like I said previous, I'm not speaking for all gays, but I want this to be the platform for it. So that's why I'm having this, this conversation about what my journey looked like and how it affected me and other people and what I'm grateful for now in terms of my truth. I also wanted to have this dialogue so that, like again, I don't want people to think that I condone, that I'm encouraging, I, I wanna make that very clear. Because as gay people, and I can speak for myself and probably a few others, we truly, truly, truly tried not to be gay. We wanted anything but. We tried and I tried, I swear I did. I tried with women, I tried the sex, I tried everything, it just didn't work. Um, so it's not like we woke up one day and said, you know what, I'm gay, I'm gonna be gay today. I wanna be gay, I'm gonna be gay, I'm gonna fake, I'm gonna just do it. Those people who wake up one morning and say, I'm gay today, they're not real. They just wanna jump on the trend because now gay seems to be popular. But believe me, it is the most unpopular term to have to this day, although we do have more rights, we still are in a bubble, whether it's at work, whether it's traveling to work, you're still classified and looked at as, please don't sit over here, you're not welcomed in this group, um, you're different. It is no different than the racism that we're experiencing many years ago and modernized today. And to be black and homosexual is a double wow. So it's, this conversation is one, an awareness that coming out and why people don't come out is so that they are not put in a box and not left out of what the norm is. Guys, it's 2018. We got to get into a place where if you say you're gay, it's okay. If you need or if you, you need to find someone to talk to because gays often sit in silence. They sit in embarrassment and they don't share what they're actually feeling with anyone and that gay is sometimes a very lonely life and I'm hoping that this video can open certain people's eyes and see that even people in your family that you might make fun of you know when you see a little three-year-old or five-year-old boy you know carrying on and dancing and everybody's putting videos out and I see videos on Instagram about, you know, young gay boys performing and dancing and people are making fun of it. And you know what? We need to stop. We need to stop making fun and we need to educate because the reason why people neglect and people don't want is because of fear of what they don't know. Ask the questions. Guys, it's, a, it's dialogue. It's if your son or daughter is gay, ask the question. Don't be like, you gay? Because if you gay, you can't live here. That is not the question that I'm asking you to ask. What I ask you is, listen, I notice, you know, you might feel different or you might feel alone. Let's have a conversation. You know, so-and-so says that, or uh, there's rumors saying that you're gay. Tell me. If it is, it, don't, it doesn't bother, bother me. I'm going to love you regardless. Little things like that. We need, and I say we as gays, need to know that if anyone, our parents have our back. And many people I've interviewed, many people I've spoken to who are homosexual, a lot of them say that they have been threatened to be kicked out. Thank you, Jesus, I was already a grown man on my own, but a lot of people have been threatened to be kicked out. You know, you'll be burned, you know, you'll be burned when you die, you're gonna go to hell. And that pr prevents people from living their authentic selves or not really wanting to tell you the truth. And that's where a lot of lies and deception come. So I encourage people to really live their authentic selves. I'm hoping that whoever's watching this video, if you yourself or you might know of someone who is this way, you support, you do not make fun of, but you embrace, you ask the question, you let them know that you love them and you have their back no matter what. And that includes extended family members because I think a lot of times when you have a large family, you still feel ostracized because you're different and because no one will understand you and people will be like, Mm, this is the gay one. I don't have that because I, like I said, my parents love me. I'm loved. Thank you, Jesus. There have been moments in my life growing up where I have not felt that, and not with my parents. Let me be very clear. 
but with extended family members not understanding who I was, not willing to understand, and just going, you know what, that is, this puppy, you know when you get a puppy that got short legs, this puppy ain't gonna make it, this, this is a little different, this, we keep that one out on the side, and let's get the ones who are normal in the group. Guys, let me tell you something, as a child, I felt it, I felt it. And a lot of times people might not think we notice, we notice things. I was left out of a lot of things just because I knew that I was different or and I was always told, yeah, the baby. Yeah, no, I'm the gay boy who no one knows how to handle, so they're going to leave me behind because of it. It did not break me, it made me stronger and it made me say to myself that I would never do that to someone else who is different or not even just because you're gay, but if you're different because you like a certain type of music or you're a geek or whatever, I'm always for the underdog. And that was because of where I was when I was a child. I wasn't an underdog, but I was often left out because of my difference. And let me tell you guys, whoever's watching, even if you're an old man and you're gay and you've not been able to live your authentic self, I'm here. I'm here to tell you that you are loved and you are enough and you are worthy and that no matter what anyone says behind your back, you should know who you are. Love yourself, if anything else. Respect and honor yourself. And know that it's gonna be okay. You might lose a lot of people coming out. Let me tell you, if you lose those people, they were never your friends to begin with. Or their family just was, just couldn't understand the time. But don't let that stop you from living your authentic self because you'll hate yourself. You won't know who you are when you look at yourself. So coming out of darkness, depression, fear, and anxiety is what I came out of. Not just coming out to the world as me being gay, but coming out of a dark place. And I thank God that I was able to do that. I thank God I had the support of my mother. And sometimes that's all you need is that mom approval. So moms out there, if you have a gay child that you turned your back on, or that you said to them that if you act on anything, you will be kicked out of my home. I want you to think about the things you are saying because you are putting your child into someone else's arms who does not have their best interest. So please love your children, love your cousins, love your sisters, love your brothers, love them. Love will get you through a lot of things. Chances are so. If you would like to know more, you must click the subscribe button, like, and comment, and continue to join me in Justin's Got the Tea. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next video, peace.